Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Praise Jesus, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise the living God. Jesus, we give him the praise. Jesus, we bless you. Hello, everybody. Hello, Karen, Tammy. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, Sean. Hello, everybody logging in. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hello, my cousin, Mike. Hope you're doing well in Washington, D.C. there. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hello, Tommy. Blessed Jesus. Blessed Savior. We thank you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you for coming. Fair Gloria. I'm Shelly Cool. Thank you for joining. This is Facebook Live, but it also be posted on YouTube. So all our teachings are posted on YouTube. Hallelujah. Blessed Jesus. Hey, Amanda. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed Jesus. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. Well, let's pray. Jesus, how we love you tonight. How we bless you, O oh God. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord, that you are God who made a covenant with us. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for who you are. We bless your name. We glorify you. We thank you, Lord. Jesus, you are the Son of the Highest. We lift you up. We glorify you. Thank you, Lord. Now, blessed Holy Spirit, come in your power. Come in your mighty. Come and change us. We give you praise. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This broadcast, our focus is knowledge. That's our focus. This is deliverance through knowledge. So if you get hold of knowledge, you are almost there. Hello, Angie. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So, I won't get tired in taking you back to 2 Peter. You should know this by, by heart. 2 Peter. Hello, Janet. Long time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We'll go back to 2 Peter. 2 Peter, chapter 1. We'll start from verse 2. We'll read through verse 4. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace be multiplied Grace and peace be multiplied, not be added, but me be multiplied, triple, tripling it, 
multiplied. Hallelujah. It says through what? Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3. According as his divine power he has given unto us all things. I remember, you have all things. According to his divine power he has given unto us all things. Which means he has released to us all things. All things has been given to us now. Why is it that some people do not take advantage of what, is, what they were given? It's because they have rejected knowledge. They have refused knowledge. So here's the deal. I have given you all things, but the all things that I've given you will come to you through knowledge. Knowledge is the transportation of all things. Knowledge is the avenue by which you get all things. He has released. He has given. Past tense, not he will give. He has given. He has let go. It's just like you being sent something. Or you order something. And you put a tracking number on it. And on your tracking device, on your phone, it's showing that this thing has arrived. You ordered it. They tell you the day it will arrive, like, you know, uh, Amazon. So the day, you know that this thing will arrive such, such a day. So you are waiting on it. So many of us, we pray for things, we ask for things from God, and we don't even wait on it. We don't even think about it. In, a, in our understanding, well, if it happens, it happens. If not, I'm fine. You know, I'm... And then there is this thing also that I, so I heard somebody say, I don't expect, I don't really expect a lot. Because if I don't, then I won't be disappointed. That is lack of faith. That is baloney. Change that thinking. God expects you to expect. Why? Because he is not a liar. Because he has said you do it and you must expect. Remember, expectation is something that you add to your faith. Faith is something not seen, but hoped for. What does that mean? Expected for. You hope, you expect for it. So if you are praying for something and you do not expect, you don't expect anything, you are out of order. So you must expect faith and expectation, they are cousins. They go together. Don't be like the, the, the church in the book of Acts where they prayed for Peter, never even expected him to come out of prison. Whatever it is that you are waiting on God, whatever it is that you are waiting for from God, add your expectation. So do something to show God that you are expecting that thing. In verse 3, according as his divine power has given us all things, all things through knowledge. Verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great precious promises. You are given exceeding great and precious promises. We are given exceeding Great and precious promises. Then he says, By these you might be partakers. You might be partakers. You might be partakers of the divine nature. Why is the, that word used might? Because it depends on your knowledge. You have what you, you, you have something from God through knowledge. That's what he's saying here. 
So one note that we've been discussing here is covenant. Understanding the covenant. And we just talked about the covenant of sacrifice. How God gave his only begotten son. Why? Because he had to make a covenant of sacrifice. And we looked at that in uh, Psalm 50, verse 5. God said, gather me the saints unto me. Gather the saints unto me. Gather the saints unto me. And then he says, those that have made a covenant of sacrifice. Psalm 50. Verse 5, gather those that have made a covenant of sacrifice. So God in his awesomeness, in his love, he gave to us a covenant of sacrifice by giving his son to us to, for him to come and he became man. He died a horrible death. Only to redeem man from his sins. Covenant. So we, we saw yesterday, you can go back to yesterday's broadcast and, and understand what we talked about. So yesterday we talked about another covenant called a tribal covenant. And there we looked at how we need even deliverance from our tribes. From our family. We looked at that in Revelation 5, 19. Revelation 5, 19, how the Bible says he has redeemed us from our tribes or kindred and the people, the nations, and the tongues. And we are going to look at that um, later on in the, in the teaching. So, we looked at how we need to be disconnected. How we need to be disconnected from certain things that our family did. Stuff that your family did that is horrible. Now, there are things that is great that you need to stay connected, but there are things that is not good. Revelation 5, verse... Let's go to it. Verse... Um, I believe it's verse 9, Janet, not 19. Revelation 5. Verse 9, not 19, verse 9. Hallelujah. So, Revelation 5, 9, it talks about four deliverances. Okay, verse 9. Let's read if you are on it. Revelation 5, verse 9. They sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and has redeemed us. You have redeemed us unto God by the blood. You redeemed us to God by the blood. You bought us back. You, you delivered us. Unto God by the blood. And then it starts talking about what is it that you've been delivered from? Out of every kindred, tribe, your people, certain things that your people did, certain ungodly things that your family was involved, you can go up to generation and generations. Tribe things that our family did. Things, so organization that you have that, that they belonged to, covenants that they made, things they did. You know, we do stuff like jumping the broom that we don't even understand what that means. We talk to the dead, we we do stuff that is not even of God, and then we tie ourselves with those covenants. Hallelujah. 
He has redeemed us by the blood from every kindred. And what else? Also turn. We have been delivered. We have been delivered according to uh, Revelation 5. Turn. Things people said. Things people spoke over you. Oh. Oh, just though, uh, that's just uh, the temple man. Those are that's that's just the temple people. Though that's the temple guys, they do that. No, you do something evil. Oh yeah, that's just the temple. Or oh, his grandfather did. Or his father did that. No, you get pregnant out of wedlock. Oh, that's just them. His mom. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. I need intercessors to pray. I need intercessors to pray as we. You know, we don't need this broadcast to disconnect. I need, I need intercessors to pray, pray and write, do stuff. Covenants, tribes, things that your tribe did, the gods that they gave themselves to, it can be to certain generations. Tribes. Covenants they made. Words they spoke. So here it says, time. Things they said. And then it says, and the people. Revelation 5.19, 5.9, sorry. He has redeemed us by God, by the blood out of every tribe. Your people, my people, the things they did that is not of God, that were not of God. Covenant, things they said. And then it says, and the people. The people that they were connected to. The evil people. And then the last it says, and the nation. The things, the, the decrees of the nation. The evil decrees of the nation. Hallelujah. Tribe. And we saw how God took Abraham in uh, Genesis 12. He said to Abraham, leave your tribe. Get out from there. Leave your tribe. Genesis 12. Genesis 12 and verse 1. Hallelujah. Now the Lord, the Lord, now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, country first, and from thy tribe, and from thy father's house, and to a land that I will show thee. Verse 2, I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Detach from your tribe. Why? Because sometimes these people worship idols. They do stuff that, you know, will get us in bondage. So God is saying, for me to make you, for me to make you a great person, I will make you. I am in the making business. But for me to make you, you have to do something for me. Get away from your tribe. You know those things they say, those things they believe, get away from it. I want to separate you. I want to bless you such that when I bless you, it will just be me. It, you won't even think it's your family. Sometimes, saints, we have to detach ourselves even from the money our family has because so much of it was obtained through other ways that you don't even approve. Detach. No wonder the Bible says when you get married, detach yourself from your parents. Go cleave to your wife. But the problem is we don't leave and cleave. We stay. And yet... There's so much control. So try. 
there are some demonic entities that are connected to our tribe. That's why we pray prayers like Leviticus 17. Yeah. That's how you, that's how you do it, Anna Rose. Just say, you know what, family members? I love you, but I'm out. I'm not part of you. I'm not going to follow the certain things that you do that is not of God. Certain, and we'll, we'll discuss uh, that when we start dealing with family. We'll discuss certain things. Leviticus, Leviticus 17, 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement. So my life is in the blood. My life is not in the blood of the temples. My life is the blood of Jesus. I, you know, when you test my DNA, it will show Jesus. Why? Because I have obtained his DNA by faith. I have his blood by faith. What is your blood type? My blood type is JC, Jesus Christ. It's not D, it's not E, it's not whatever. My blood type is JC. So when you test it, it will show JC. So, oh, so like, man, your blood test is JC. What in the world is that? It's Jesus the Christ. I'm not, look, you have to renounce certain things in your family or it will follow you. Your mama struggled. Mama got pregnant before they got married. Mama did this. Father this. Renounce those things. Cut yourself loose and declare, Lord, I renounce my DNA of my family. I connect myself to the blood of Jesus. May the blood of Jesus flow through my veins. May the DNA of Jesus be found in me. When they test me, may it be, may it be known that the DNA of Jesus was found your character, your behavior. Hallelujah. You know, when they looked at the disciples, the Bible says they knew they were ignorant men. But one thing they knew was that they had been with Jesus. What did they see? They saw the character of Jesus. They saw them. They smelled like Jesus. They acted like Jesus. Why? They had changed the tribe. They joined themselves to the tribe of Judah. The lion of the tribe of Judah. They joined themselves to that tribe. The tribe of Jesus. You know, whenever we go away, whenever we are out of state and, you know, other churches, some people come to me and say, ah, oh, you know, ah, uh, we know you're not from this. We, you know you are not from this this area. Where is that accent from? You know what I say? It's from heaven. Like oh, it is. Yeah, it is from heaven. Like you are from. Yeah, I am from heaven. We are not of this. Earth. We are from above. Your citizenship is from above. Hallelujah. You are from above. Your tribe, you are of the tribe of Jesus. What tribe are you? Ah, oh, I'm Jesus Christ. Oh, I am from the lion of the of the I'm, I'm from the from, from the tribe of Judah, the lion of Judah, Jesus Christ. That is my tribe. Why? Because I was ushered in, I was adopted. I was picked, I was chosen by Jesus to be called his own. He took me in and made me his own. And he gave me his last name. He gave me a name, sanctified me, called me by his name. If my people who are called by his name, I am called by his name. Hallelujah. Yes. I renounce the DNA of my family. I renounce everything that came in it. Everything that has that is in my blood, poverty, everything, diseases, every powers of darkness that was injected in the family, in my family bloodline from whatever generation, I renounce it. I reject it. I'm out of it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
I disconnect that power of darkness from my life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I have blood. I have connection. Jesus' blood is flowing through me. The blood of Jesus is flowing through you. That's why when they test you, you don't test for any violence. Test for faith. They tested you and they tested you. Faith, you are positive. Faith, oh man. They test you again, ah, full of love. They, he tested for love. He tested for faith. He tested that he is a lover of Jesus. Why? Because he has changed his DNA by choice. Hallelujah. Personal covenants. That's the, that's the one I want to deal with today. Personal covenants, and I'm going to deal with also with family covenants, a little bit different from tribe. Personal covenants. Hallelujah. Personal covenants. First of all, when you become born again, you develop, you enter into a covenant with Jesus personally. You enter into a covenant with Jesus, you personally, not you as a church. Yes, there's that covenant, but you personally, you, Gloria Smith, you, Janet, you enter into a personal relationship. It's Jesus and Anna Rose. It's Jesus and Denia. It's not Jesus and, and uh, Denia's family, no. It's Jesus and the near first. It's Jesus and Janet first. You enter into a personal relationship. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the day you confess with your mouth, you had access. You entered into the kingdom. You had access to everything. First, Second Peter one three became your personal this by his divine power he has given unto you gloria unto you janet unto you all things that pertains to life and godliness through knowledge so he has given you all things because you entered into that house and arose you enter into that king that that place the kingdom of god he gave you the keys He, it's Matthew 16, 19. He has given unto us the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever you open, whatsoever you shut, he has given unto you all things. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew 16. Matthew 16. 19. Hallelujah. So verse 19 of Matthew 16 says, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I will. Prophetic. When you come into the kingdom, when you enter the kingdom, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom. Not one key. Keys of the kingdom. What does that mean? Principles of the kingdom. Knowledge of the kingdom. That's what it means. Keys of the kingdom is the knowledge of the kingdom. And then he says, The kingdom of heaven, whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. But you have to understand, first of all, the keys of the kingdom. What are the principles of the kingdom? What are these keys? How do they function? How do they work? I must understand that first. You don't just give keys to anybody. He gave us keys. But those keys come, though keys is a revelation. Like you have keys, you can have a bunch of keys. If you don't know how they go, they mean nothing. They are useless to you. 
If you pick up a bunch of keys from the street, you don't know who dropped them. You don't know where they go. You have keys, but you have no idea. You cannot take an advantage. You cannot use the keys. The keys, ladies and gentlemen, the keys is the knowledge. That's what it is. The keys is the knowledge. So you start thinking. Let's say, let me, let me, let me talk about, let me, let me mention one key. What is the key that Jesus gave his disciples when they could not cast the demon out? He says the key to that is prayer and fasting. That's it. He said this thing comes, comes out only by prayer and fasting, which means when you pray and fast, what do you develop is faith. You develop, you develop faith because you kill the flesh. And then you are empowered. What is the key to having friends? It says, if you want friends, show yourself friendly. That's the key. What is the key to uh, obtaining something? Like, let's say, finances or whatever it is. It's sowing seeds. That's it. So, you have to sow a seed to get something. That's the key. So there are several keys of the kingdom. And we have to understand those keys. Hallelujah. So the personal covenant, it's you treasure it because he paid a big price for it. And he did not wait for you to do anything. Because he says, when we were yet sinners, Christ shed his blood. He showed his love by, shed, by shedding his blood before you ever repented. He, showed, he shed his blood. God gave forth his son. When the fullness of time was come, he sent forth his son. Keys. So, the personal covenant that I have to worry about if it's not fixed is do I have a covenant with Jesus? Do I have a personal covenant with the Lord? And you know what? We do the best to keep our side, but He keeps it for us. He keeps forgiving. He keeps giving. He keeps coming after us. Even when you go away, he says, it's like he leaves the 99 and he comes for you. He searches for that penny that is lost. He comes to search for us. Why? Because of the covenant of love. Personal covenant. Now, in those personal covenants, we, how do we get born again? It's Romans 3. If thou shalt, let's go to it. Romans 3, the Romans road. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Precious Jesus, saints, this is exciting. I've been teaching every day. Hallelujah. Every day. So which means I've been searching every day. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. For all have sinned and came short of the glory of God. Everybody. And you know what? We come short of the glory of God every day. Verse 20, verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That is in Christ Jesus. We have sinned. We have come short of the glory of God. But the Bible says, if we confess 
with our mouth and believe with our heart that Jesus died, Jesus rose from the dead, we shall be saved. How do we make that covenant with God? It's through our mouth. We speak with our mouth. Now, let me show you a very, very concerning scripture. When you speak, you write. You may be by yourself, but whatsoever you say, consider it written. Good or bad, you write it, and there's a document about you. So you've written a document today. You've written documents today. Psalm 45, verse 1. My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made, touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Psalm 45, verse 1. My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things. I speak of the things which I have made, touching the king. So, what I speak, the things that I speak, I make something. I speak of things which I have made. The things that I speak, they are visible. They, they, are, they are visible in the spirit. They are actually there in the spirit. And then, the things that I speak, good or bad, it touch the king. It touches the king of glory. It touches the, it touches the heart of Jesus. So if I have to speak some stuff, I might as well watch my mouth. I might as well speak things that is pleasing to him because whatever I say, it will touch him. Whatever I say, I create some things. Then it says, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. The other Bible says, skillful writer. I write with my tongue. My tongue writes. My tongue has so many documents. You know, if, you know there are apps now on, on the computer that you can speak to it and it can write. You speak to your computer. You speak in a mic, in a microphone, and it writes. It writes for you. And you know what? This time, the computer may make mistakes. Like it makes mistakes when, I, when I'm talking to it. It, it. it writes something that I didn't even say. But spiritually, when you speak, you write. When you speak, you make covenants. So, ladies and gentlemen, children of God, saints of God, let's watch what we say. Let's watch what we say. Let's not dictate. Let's not say things that the Spirit will write and then will come back to harm us. Let me show you at one point. First of all, Mark 11, Mark 11, verse 23. Let's go to Mark 11, verse 23. Mark chapter 11 and verse 23. These are personal covenants. Mark 11, verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall doubt in their heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. He shall have whatsoever he says. You will have what you say. Bad or good, you have what you say. Positive or negative, you have what you say. 
You keep confessing sickness, you have that sickness. And you have no one to blame. That sickness will be because of what you said. That's why it is good to confess the word of God. That's why it's good to confess contrary to if you are feeling bad, you confess contrary to that. You are not lying. You are speaking the promises of God. Don't help the devil in agreeing with what they are saying. So Jesus said we will have what we say. Verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, now it goes deeper. Not just say the things you desire, things that you meditate on. You shall have whatsoever you desire. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Hallelujah. So I must be pro I must be positive in what I say. I must confess that oh you are gonna be great today. You will do great things, Kedri. Man of God, Lord man, good to see you. Hallelujah. The Bible says you shall have whatsoever you say. Proverbs says the expectation of a righteous shall not be cut off. It doesn't matter what I expect. It says it shall not be cut off. When, you are, when, when, you, when somebody prays for you, what is your expectation? So if your expectation is, uh, if I don't get well, I got some ibuprofen at home, then you won't get well. Because expectation is the key to your healing. You have to expect. So many times people are prayed for and they wait for somebody else to pray for them. You know, when kids pray for me at church, there's a day Michael and Miranda came to me and said, Pastor, we want to pray for you. And they just laid hands on me and I felt great. It, there is something that you have to do to answer that faith. Faith has an answer. Faith comes, but you have to respond to it. Get up and go. Get up and go. The, the man got up. The man at the gate of the beautiful. He looked at Peter. And he says, beholding as if he was going to receive something. And they said to him, silver and God and gold I have not, but such as I have in the name of Jesus. Get up and walk. They stretched their hand and pulled him. And he walked. And he started leaping, he started running around. Covenant. The covenant of what we say. The covenant of the words. We are already in the covenant. But your miracle is activated by what you say. You are already in. You are already in the covenant. God already paid the price. God already sent the word. God already sent the Holy Ghost. God already sent everything you need. Everything I need. But... I have to respond to it. That's how covenants work. Hallelujah. Remember, we, dis we, we define a covenant as a system of authorization or authorized agreement between two or more individuals ratified by the blood with mutual advantages if kept, but also with severe consequences if it's broken. And one thing that, that makes a covenant is the mouth. Go with me to James 3. James 3 verse 9. Personal covenant. 
the book of James, James 3 and verse 9. Now, let's start from verse 8. James 3, verse 8. But the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly, evil, full of deadly poison. It's more dangerous than the rattlesnake. The tongue. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Verse 10, out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursings. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does fountain send forth at the same time, at the same place, sweet water and bitter water? No. Most of our problem comes from this mouth. If we can tame this tongue, if we can glue this mouth and talk only when you are, when God asks you something, when you have to talk to God, when you have to say something positive, because this mouth, everything, rumors, lies, accusations, backbiting, gossips, mention it, it starts from the tongue, from the mouth, this is the outlet, outlet of everything. The mouth says stuff. Lies. Blasphemies. All that is through this mouth. Hallelujah. Genesis 31. I want to show you how this woman's mouth killed her. Genesis 31. Genesis 31. And verse 32. Verse 32 of Genesis 31. Where with whosoever, first of all, Laban was looking for his staff. Rachel stole some stuff from his, her father's house. In, so Laban came looking for his things. In verse 31, Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Peradventure, thou wouldest take by force thy daughters from me. Because he ran away. Verse 32, with whomsoever thou findest thy gods, let him not live, because before our brethren descend, thou what is thine with me, and take it to thee. For Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. Verse 34, now Rachel had taken the images and put them in the camel's furniture. And sat upon them, and Laban searched all the tent, but found them not. Look at what she said, verse 35. She said to her father, Let it not displease my Lord that I cannot rise before thee, for the custom of the women is upon me. And he searched, but found not the images. When you read further, Rachel died before she could even give birth. She never even saw her baby. The children of the, 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 the Jews, the Israelites, what did they say when they crucified Jesus? Let this death come upon us and our children. They spoke that. And guess what? Over the years, the Jewish people have been killed from left to right like crazy. They are wanted. They spoke that. That was a curse. Personal. 
words. Person also has to do with sexual, our conduct. Sexual. You start, you're sleeping around. You're sleeping with someone that is not your husband. You create a personal tie called a soul tie. And that soul tie will haunt you until it is broken. Hallelujah. Let me show you the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 3. Hallelujah. Verse 16. Know ye not that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Understanding that I am a temple of God. So I cannot take the temple of God and defile it. Now let me show you something else in uh, 1 Corinthians 6 15 2 Corinthians no, 1 Corinthians 6, 15 Know ye not that your bodies are members of Christ your bodies my body, not my spiritual body my body he says, it's a member of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make the members of an harlot? God forbid. Now, the Bible calls every sex before marriage, whoever you sleep with before you marry them, that person is called a prostitute, according to the Bible. They are called a, they, they, that person is called an harlot. So if you're sleeping with someone, they don't have to be called, they don't have to have a name like they're prostitute, you know, pimping around. No, 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 no. If you sleep with someone that is not your wife or your husband, I mean, your wife should be a female. If you're sleeping with someone that is not your wife, it doesn't matter if, how long you've lived together, both of you, the Bible calls you prostitutes. I did not say it, it's right here. It calls, it calls that person unhallowed. Then, it says, shall I take the members of Christ, the members of Christ, my body, they are members of Christ, my eyes, my ears, my fingers, my sexual organs, everything that I have, these are members of Christ. They have paid, Jesus paid a membership for these parts of my body, to be to benefit the benefits of this, you know, if you are a member of a country club, you benefit. There, you know, there is a country club that is called me, and you know, it's a golf club. By the way, they told me if you are a member, then you can bring your family. They can swim. They can play tennis. They can do so. Membership comes with benefits. So my body. These are members of Christ. My lips are members of Christ. My eyes, my nose, my mouth, my tongue, my fingers, every part of me. These are members of Christ. So why should I use my tongue, which is a member of Christ, to be cursing people? Why should I use my sexual organs to go sleep with somebody else? Why should I defile the members of Jesus? I should not do that. You should not do that. You should never defile the members of Christ. Verse 16. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot, he that is joined to an harlot, Every person that you sleep with, you join together. You become one. That is scary sense. You become one with that person. What 
Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? That's why when you get married, you become one body. You start thinking the same sometimes. You become one soul. You, be, you meet together. It says Jonathan, he had such a great relationship with his, with his friend David. It says they are so knit together. You know, we take sex for granted. Oh, because we love each other. <laughs> Here, the devil is the one that signed that relationship. People sleep together like it's nothing. You know, married and you're sleeping together. You are creating an evil covenant. And the one, the, listen, let, let, let me go, but let me explain a little bit about a covenant. A covenant is between three entities. There is, let's say, there is me. There is the covenant. Between me and the covenant, there's a God. So, you have three things. You have three statues. If I can use that as an example. So, you have me that has declared Jesus to be the Lord. And then between, <coughs> excuse me, between me and Jesus, there's a covenant. In that covenant, Jesus has said what he would do for me and the expectation of me. Jesus has said, if you sin, come to me. I'll forgive you. Jesus has said, I am your advocate. I will pray for you. But we meet at a covenant, at a covenant of prayer. We meet at the altar. That is a covenant. So, sex is one of the highest covenant. And it's one of the highest things the devil is using today to corrupt you. To corrupt our lives, to corrupt our children. Sex includes sex with gadgets or sex with your computer, or sex with your phone, sex, pornography, pictures, all that is sex in the eyes of God. That is one of the highest covenant. In fact, even the word worship comes from the word yada, which is most like sex. Because your soul is involved. Your spirit is involved. Your body is involved. Hallelujah. Soul ties. Evil soul ties. So then he says in uh, verse 16. He that is joined to an harlot is one body. Anyone that is joined to an harlot is one body. Again, that harlot or prostitute is a person that is not your wife or your husband. So if you are two people sleeping together, then you are both prostitutes according to the Bible. I know it sounds so horrible to say, but that's what it is. For the two says he shall be one flesh. So you become one flesh. Now, sense of God, I've been in deliverance for a long, long time. I prayed for a lady. I remember I prayed for a lady over the phone. She called me from Canada. I remember where I was because I was trying to buy myself some shoes. You know, I love shoes. Maybe I need prayer for that. Praise the Lord. But... She called me and she told me, she asked me, first of all, if this is a deliverance means, da, 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 da. then we started talking. And then she said, um, she will do things that she doesn't like to do. Like, let's say, she doesn't, she doesn't like coffee. She will start, she will find herself making coffee. She will take a shower and then she will find herself again in the shower. And I said to her, 
you must, there is witchcraft going on. And that it was true. The man that she used to sleep with started controlling her from where she was. And instead of showering, instead of doing things that she, was, she wanted to do, she would be doing things that she had already done. Hallelujah. Sex. It is very, very important that you keep yourself away from that personal covenant. Then in verse 17 it says, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. You know, as we pray for people in deliverance, I've heard a man speaking in a woman's voice. In a, a man speaking from a woman's body, a voice of a man comes out. So ties. That demon gets in a person. Why? Because he or she made a covenant with that. And then it becomes a problem even when you get married. Because you keep thinking about it. Hallelujah. Here's what the Lord wants in verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. You know, I had a, I was connected to this man of God. He was so, you know, he started so tight so much. Such that when you stand when people are standing next to him, he can see heads of men or women that you've been with, with their names on it. One well, man was scary. So the first time he told me that, I said, thinking, oh gosh, I said, do you see the things that I used to do? I said, no, 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 no. If you've been delivered, I don't. But if you still have those ungodly ties, he will see the heads and you start calling them by their names. We were in Lexington, a, a, a city somewhere around Le Lexington, and this woman, I, I went to, to catch for him because, you know, I went to, there to be with him. And he started calling the names, and this woman was like, what? He called the names because he could see the, the heads of men around the uh, head because so ties becomes like a crown. It's the crown of the devil. Your soul, is connected to that person. But it's an evil sort of. It's not a clean sort of. You can have a clean sort of. So let me show you a clean sort of before, before I, 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 I move on to something else here. First Samuel. First Samuel, um, eighteen. First Samuel eighteen. Verse. Verse two. Uh, verse. Let's. Let verse uh, three. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him. As his own soul. So that became a soul type. He loved him as his own soul. Let me show you something else here. Jonathan loved him in verse 1. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul. That the soul of Jonathan was knit. K-N-I-T. With the soul of David. With the soul of David. And you see, also, you see this also in Colossians 2 verse 2 and 2 verse 19. Colossians 2. Colossians 2. Hallelujah. Colossians 2 
verse 2. Paul gives us another revelation here. Colossians 2 verse 2 said that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love. Being knit together in love. And unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding. And to the knowledge and to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God. Let's go to verse 19. And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands, having nourishments ministered and knit together, increases with the increase of God. So, Jesus connected us with him. We are knit together. We are connected together. Remember, your body are members of Christ. Your tongue. So every time you're about to use your tongue to curse somebody out, remember you are using the members of Christ. Every time you are about to type something, to type something to respond to that text, remember you are using the members of Christ. Those fingers belong to Christ. That mouth belongs to Christ. Every time you're about to look at something that is not of God, those eyes belong to Jesus. Every time that thinking crazy, that mind belongs to Jesus. Your members are members of Christ. Hallelujah. We are connected by covenant. So which means I have to break Every covenant that is not of God. Hallelujah. Every covenant that I've made by sex, by words, by gifts. Your money is a covenant. When you give, you buy stuff. That's a covenant. You connect yourself to it. Covenant. He is a covenant keeping God. He remembered his covenant. And every time you repent, he remembers your covenant. He looks at you and he remembers your, the covenant that he has with you. But you have to keep, do the best to keep your covenant. Renounce Every sexual covenant, imagination, imagination, renounce all those things. Why? Because his word, in Hebrews 4, he says his word is sharper than any two-edged sword. And he said he can disconnect you from that sort of Hebrews 4 verse 12. It says, Let's read from verse 11 first. Let us, let us labor therefore to enter into the rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And then he says, piercing even to the devising asunder of the soul. So what Ever your soul is connected to the word of God has power to destroy that, to break that, to break it at the level of your soul, on the spirit, and your body. How do you know your body is connected? When you see those, when you see that person, you can feel your body moving sexually. Your body is connected. And you know what? There are so many saints of God that their soul is in prison because of sleeping with that man or sleeping with that woman. Your soul is in prison. Hallelujah. No wonder David prayed. He says, deliver my soul out of prison that I may praise you. In Psalm 142 verse 7, deliver my soul out of prison that I may praise you. So sometimes 
Everything else is going right. But there's part of you that is in prison with that man. Or that is in prison with that woman. And every time they call you, you feel like you have to do it. Why? Because you are in prison. And they know what to say to you to get you going. Tonight, that's the end of it. I say tonight, that's the end of it. In the name of Jesus, we break that spirit connection. I break by the word of God, by the position as a servant of God, by the position as the pastor. For the Lord said, we shall have what we say. And the Lord says, we shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Father, we invoke the word of God. We invoke the written word. We invoke the spirit of the word. We invoke the name of God. We invoke the name of Jesus. We invoke the name of the Holy Spirit. We invoke the precious blood. We invoke the promises of God. Father, we invoke all these entities as witnesses, as a backing. Let it be known this day, O oh God, that the sword ties we are broken by the word of God. Let it be known this day, O oh God, that the sword ties was broken by the fire of God. For it is written, the word of the Lord is as a fire and as a hammer. I bring down the hammer of the word of God to break every rock, to break every heart that is rocky, to break it now. I break it now. I break it now. I break it now. In the name of Jesus, I break that sword tie. I break that sword tie. In Jesus' name, I break that tie. I break that tie. In Jesus' name, I call the fire of God to burn now. Burn now. Burn! And destroy every lynx in your mind, in the name of Jesus. Every covenant or every evil covenant that has come in by word, by what you say, in the name of Jesus, we invoke the word of the Lord and we declare that he has exalted the word above all his names. The word of the Lord is above. We declare that he has exalted. Therefore, he has exalted the name of Jesus above every other name at the mention of the name Jesus every knee must bow every time confess that Jesus Christ is Lord we break that power now in the name of Jesus we declare the name of Jesus is exalted Every sword tie with that man, every sword tie with that woman, I break it now. Every sword tie with your tribe, I break it now. Every tie with your family, that is not of God. Every ungodly sword tie with your family, the tie of control, the sword ties of witchcraft, I break that. I call fire from heaven to come down now. I call fire from heaven to burn. I call fire from heaven. In the name of Jesus, my Father, my God, Everything that is that is in the heavenlies, Lord Jesus, like you saw the plan of the devil to, to sift Peter as wheat. Father, we go into the heavenlies now and we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus against the principalities and powers. I plead the blood of Jesus against the rulers of darkness. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. We thank you, O oh God. And we give you praise. We give you honor. Lord Jesus, we demolish every stronghold. Every house of strongholds we demolish. Lord, you said, how can we enter? How can we destroy the strong man unless we enter his house? We enter his house right now. We enter that thing that he calls his house. And we destroy all his goods. We call fire from heaven. We call fire from heaven to burn and destroy all the goods of a strong man. Burn, 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 burn. In Jesus' name. Every stronghold in your mind. Strongholds in your mind. Lay their hands on your mind. Strongholds in your mind. In the name of Jesus. Thinking in your mind. Thinking patterns in your mind. I break that thinking pattern. I break that thinking pattern that caused you to make mistakes. That caused you to go back 
to the dogs, to the dogs. I break that mindset now. I break that in the name of Jesus. I destroy that in Jesus' name. Every doctrine that you've built, I break that doctrine now in Jesus' name. I break that doctrine now in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus on your mind, on your mind, on your conscience. I plead the blood of Jesus in your mind, in your heart. I fill you with the blood of Jesus. I fill you with the blood of Jesus. I flood your spirit, soul, and body with the blood of Jesus. I declare Jesus Christ is Lord in your life. Hallelujah. I give you praise. I give you praise. Every sickness, every covenant of words, things that you have said with your mouth about sickness, I break that word now. I break that word now. I break that word now. I break those words now in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, I deprogram every diabolical programs concerning the lives of your people. I deprogram them now in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus on every programming of the devil, on every mind of the devil. I pro deprogram them now in the name of Jesus. Father, you said in your word that they say, how do heathen gather together and say, let us break every words of the heathens, whatever they have planned. Father, in the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. We call confusion in their camp. Confusion in their camp. In the name of Jesus, I break that so tie with your parents. That is not of God. I break that so tie with your exes. That is not of God. I break that sexual so tie. I break those words. Word so tight. I break that financial so tight. I break it now in Jesus' name. Financial so tight. I break your powers in Jesus' name. Every so tight that is of, of the devil. I break you now in Jesus' name. Every so tight with organization that is not of God. I break that so tight now in Jesus' name. I release the fire. I release the fire. I release the fire. Fire of God. Fire. 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 And every demon that came in because of these covenants, come out of the people. Get out now. I command you to go. I command you to go. I command you to go. Get out now. I demand that you go. I decree that you go in the name of Jesus. Go now. Right now. In Jesus' name. You sickness and diseases, get out from the people. You that came in because of confession, get out now. You lying spirit, get out now. Go now, go now, you demonic sicknesses. Go now, go now, coronavirus. Go now, anyone that is testing positive. I command that virus to die. Virus, die and get out of the people of God. In the name of Jesus, we call you God. The God who answers by fire. Be God. Hallelujah. The God who answers by fire. Let the fire come down from heaven. Let that fire burn. Let that fire destroy. Let that fire now burn. Let that fire consume. You are a consuming fire. And you've made ministers of God. Flames of fire. Consuming fire. Respond by consuming anything that is not of God. You are the consuming fire. Let fire come down. Let fire consume every evil. Let fire consume every wickedness. Let fire of God destroy. Let fire burn. Let fire now deliver. Let fire now heal. Let fire now change lives. Let the fire of God destroy things that is not of God. Let the fire of God purify the hearts of men. In the name of Jesus, oh God, let the fire burn every lying spirit. Let the fire of God burn and change. Let the fire of God burn witchcraft camps. Every witchcraft gathering, let the fire of God burn you. Witchcraft gathering, we send fire. Witchcraft gathering, we send fire. We send fire. We send fire. Be burnt now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, I give you praise. Yes, every covenant, 
with the with, with the virus. Anywhere where it has been exalted, it has spoken of more than anything else. You speak of fear. May the fire of God burn you. Jesus, I give you the praise. Jesus, I thank you for your people. Father, I thank you for your people. I thank you that you have done it for them. In the name of Jesus, you have done it for us. Thank you, Lord. Father, now we renew the covenant with you. We are your members. You said our bodies are members of Christ. We are your members. Lord, use us as your members. Use everyone watching, even those that watch after this, those that watch on YouTube. Use them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, dear Lord, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. God bless you, saints of God. You know, the word of God is precious. The word of God is the only option. Nothing would work. You can go for counseling. You can go for therapy. Only what comes in here. Remember this. Your body are members of Christ. Not members of an hallow. Not members of cigarettes. Not members of alcohol. Not members of fornication. They are not. They are members of Christ. Which means somebody paid membership for you. And Jesus paid that life membership. Think about it. You know, think about a life membership. That's what you are part of that life membership because he has said he has given unto us an everlasting covenant. An everlasting covenant. I want to hear from you. I know God touched you. I know God delivered a lot of us here. It's a prayer of the saints that avails much. The prayer of the righteous avails much. I believe you are free. Hallelujah. Now, we're closing. We'll see you tomorrow again. Tomorrow I'll be discussing family. Family covenants. And after that I'll be discussing generational covenants. Positional covenants. I'll, I'll also discuss to you, with you death covenant. How people make covenant with death. Then we'll also discuss territorial covenants. Then also we'll discuss timely covenants. Timely covenants. And lastly, we'll discuss marriage covenant. In the family covenant, you are part of the family. And there's a covenant. That's why when God puts you under a pastor, under a man, under a woman, that is a covenant that he has given you. A covenant. You are under that covering. When you start stepping out, you bring yourself danger. That's why everyone must have a pastor. God has chosen a pastor for you. According to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I believe it's three, or three, 15 years. He has chosen pastors for you. Pastors that will cry out to God. Covenant. Covenant. Whoever that man is that you claim to be your pastor, cook to them. Drink from them. Demand that they give you whatever they have. What they've received from the Lord. Put a demand. You know what? I don't let, I put a demand on those people that God has given me. I call them. I bother them. Put a demand. Don't just do nothing. 
God gave them to you. So I don't want to go here without giving you an opportunity to sow your seeds. I know we do this every day, but when the word of God is preached, find something. Sow a seed. You can go to a PayPal, you can go to Cash App, or you can send a check. The address Janet will post it. So if you go back to, to, to this broadcast, you see us. There is an address. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Join in. Be under a covenant. Don't be just nobody. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Send me some testimony. I know there will be testimony. Send those to me. Text those to me on my message. All right? God bless you. God keep you. May his love overshadow you. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Love you all. Bye-bye.